Lindsay from SRAM. And for today's Tech Tuesday, it's new bike day. Today, I will be helping Kelly get set up on her new Juliana Furtado. We are going to go over suspension sag setup. So, in order to set up suspension sag, we first have to know what it is. So, suspension sag is how much your suspension is compressing or sagging with your rider weight and a neutral riding position. And we want to set up suspension sag so that we can ensure that we're using all of our available travel without bottoming out too much, and also that we're not leaving travel on the table. So we want to be efficient when we're climbing, yet when we turn the bike downhill, we want to make sure that we're using all of our travel. So to set up suspension sag, you will need a shock pump. This is different than your tire pump, so please do not use a tire pump. Second thing you need to do is find the blue knobs on your fork and your rear shock and make sure that they're set to fully open or full plush. Second thing we need to do is I need to know what Kelly's rider weight is. And when I say rider weight, I mean body weight plus all of her riding gear on. And then I need to set both the fork and the rear shock to a baseline air pressure. There is an air guide on the back of this RockShox fork that shows you based on your rider weight how much pressure you should put in this fork. For the rear shock, a good rule of thumb to go by is your rider weight in pounds plus 10 to 15 PSI. I have already preset the baseline air pressure based on Kelly's rider weight. And now I will set her up and we will test her suspension sag. To do this, I'm gonna have her get on the bike, level pedals, and in her neutral aggressive riding position. No brakes. And then I'm gonna have her compress the suspension three or four times. I'm gonna have her rest, and I'm gonna move these O-rings, there's red O-rings, or phenometers as we like to call them, all the way up to the seal head. So on the fork, push it all the way down, and then on the rear shock, all the way up to that air cam. Then I'm gonna have her slowly step off, trying not to compress the suspension anymore. Now we'll look and we'll see how we did. On RockShox's fork, you'll see these gold sag gradients. They list the travel along with a percentage. For this 140 fork, I can see there's a 30% line, a 20% line, and a 10%. This O-ring is well above 30%, landing about at 50%, meaning her rider weight is compressing this suspension 50%, and if she goes out for a ride, she is gonna blow through that travel and constantly bottom out. When we move to the rear shock, I can look in there and see she's at about 25 to 30%. That's exactly where she wants to be on this Rock Shock's rear shock for this type of bike. So what do we need to do to the front fork? Because we're running about 50% sag right now, and we want to be closer down to about the 25% range for this fork and this travel, we're gonna need to add air. We'll remove the air cap, take our shock pump, and I'm gonna add about 10 to 15 PSI. It's at 34 right now. Bump that up to about 48 PSI. And then I'm gonna have Kelly get back on the bike and we're gonna run through the same exercise we just did. So up, bounce a couple times, rest, move that O-ring, have her step off to the side. Now I can see for a 140 fork, she's at about 32%. So we're getting closer. I, for this fork, would add probably about five more PSI, and then I would test her again until that O-ring is probably around the 25% range. From there, I would know, okay, she's ready to go out on her first ride. And there you have it, suspension setup. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Tech Tuesday. 
Now that your bike's all dialed, get out there and ride it.